Hello there. Today I'm going to talk about the pitfalls and problems of shooting waterfalls and give you a few tips and tricks on how you can really get the best out of them. I'm also then going to finish the day up on the North York Moors with hopefully a beautiful sunset. So I'd really like it if you were to come with me. Let's go. One way that you can use waterfalls is just to use them as part of your storytelling, as a, as a place in general. So in a little stream like this, at first glance, it's not very interesting. Or it is interesting, but it's not gonna make a, a sort of stunning picture. But you can use these little streams and just little details in, the, in any landscape as a bit of a link in a series of images. It's exactly like when we shoot a wedding. You'll get those big moments, the first kiss, the first dance, the, the bride and groom, that kind of thing. But you also get those little detail shots, like pictures of the champagne and the cake and the knife of the cake, just to tie the whole thing together, tie the whole story together. And there's no reason why landscape pho photography should be any different. So that's the sort of shot I'm going for here. I am composed just down on this set of rocks and this little waterfall here, there's some really nice detail in there as the water is rushing through. What I'm focusing on, or what I'm composing for in this image, is just to get some of that interesting shape in there. Because as the water's running through, it's hitting rocks, it's going in different directions, to tie it all together and to just give it a bit more of a, an interesting feel, I'm also going to make it a long exposure. Right, I'm composed in, and I know with this sort of brightness I can just put this 10 stop filter on the front of the camera here. So into manual mode, bring up the live view. I'm F11, ISO 100, 30 second exposure, two second timer, just focusing on the, on the current of the water there. And here we go. Okay, so that's done now. Let's take a look. Yeah, I mean, it isn't the best image ever and it's not a grade A portfolio level image, but as a little link for that narrative, it works really, really well. It's still beautiful, there's some lovely shape, tone and colour in there. Just a nice use of this waterfall, shooting it from the side, just from the riverbank, getting in close at 70 millimetres with this lens, with the long exposure, adding interest at every level, and it's turned into something pretty good. A couple of deer, they're beautiful. <laughs> I ever see deer in England when I'm out and about, unless I'm scaring them on my mountain bike. They're running off just before I can photograph them. Fantastic though. So I've just been walking along and I've realised another problem you can have when you're shooting waterfall photography is that if you're wearing a microphone, it can pop out of the microphone socket and therefore I didn't record a full section that I didn't record the sound of a full section that I've just filmed. So here, this is where I'm about two miles away from there now, but this is Malian Spout uh, in North Yorkshire and it's a fantastic waterfall. The problem I was having here is the same with a lot of waterfalls, is that when you see them in real life, they're just so impressive. This one is huge, so tall, but trying to bring that 3D world down into a 2D world to tell the story of that waterfall is really difficult because you instantly lose context and perspective. And that's something that I always want to try and put into a photograph. And I find that really difficult with waterfalls. And I'm not gonna even try to do it here because as soon as you step back a little way from the waterfall, there was trees in the way, uh, branches sort of coming across it and it just didn't look good. What I tried to do was to get in really close and use some of the beautiful black rock that you can see behind there, mixed in with some of that moss covered rock as well. And then the sort of sheet of white bright water that's coming down to just create something a little bit more intimate, shall we say, although I, I was still at a fairly wide angle. Now I did get a little bit of luck where it made what would have been an okay shot into a fairly interesting shot actually. With the sun shining through the trees onto that waterfall, it produced a tiny little but beautiful rainbow. So all I did was trying to compose that into my shots. Now, as well as that black rock with the green rock with the white sheet, I've now got that colorful rainbow 
adding an extra shape to that image. I love having rainbows in images because it's that arch is such a perfect shape to have in any image and it's just a beautiful thing to see anyway. And having it in this small environment was absolutely fascinating. So I'm actually really pleased with the image I've captured. It's a shame I didn't record the sound, but these things happen. So I hope you like the image. Now, one of the main reasons I started a YouTube channel was to make photography inclusive and accessible and that desire has never changed. That is a challenge sometimes though because YouTube demands more views and it, it sort of sometimes feels like I'm being forced to make videos as brief and concise as possible and I feel like I'm having to leave out an awful lot of detail. Now I also run tours and workshops and they're great, they're a great experience but they are frustratingly expensive because in reality, I would like everybody to be able to come along. So to try and correct that, over the last six months, I have been filming a video, a masterclass of sorts that shares all of my experience and process into shooting landscape photography. And it's pretty much everything you would get on a workshop, but at a fraction of the cost. So rather than talk about it here, I'd love to just show you the introduction of the video so you can see what it's all about. Come with me as we take the next steps on our landscape photography journey. Whether you're a new beginner or a seasoned enthusiast, the next several hours will really help to take your landscape photography to the next level. We're going to delve into all the technical aspects that you need to know to really master your camera because once you do that, we can take those skills into the field and really make some beautiful images. Not only that, but we're also going to look at the artistic side and think about why we're doing what we're doing and develop our eye, develop our skills in that area to really create some beautiful images. We're going to visit different locations and discuss how to get the best out of different landscapes like seascapes, woodland, moors and in the mountains. I'm also going to guide you through the photography process right from planning through to possibly the most important part of photography and that's creating the final print because once you get that final beautiful piece of artwork in your hand it really is a special moment and lots of other people can enjoy it too. So please do come with me on what is possibly the most incredible journey you will ever go on. So let's go. This is what it's all about. This is what it's all about. This is why I want to make this video to help you improve your photography and just to be able to experience this kind of thing. It's just, it's breathtaking. So yeah, I'm very excited for you to see this. It's nearly seven hours of brand new content. To get the video, all you need to do is head over to firstmanphotography.com slash masterclass and you can start streaming that within a few minutes. I'm just so proud of this. I really think you're going to love it. It's got all the information in there that you're going to need to capture some beautiful landscape photographs. It's all in one place. It's from a source you can trust and I really don't think there's anything else out there like this. So firstmanphotography.com slash masterclass, or you can hit the link up there. Right, so I'm up onto the moors now, and before I tell you about a little shot that I've got composed here, which I think is gonna be fantastic, one last thing about waterfall photography that I, by far, find the biggest problem with it, and that's really the narrative. One of the things I talk about on the masterclass is the idea of developing an approach to composition. Within my approach, one of those things is to lead the eye. 
lead the eye to some kind of subject or focal point, basically. And it's a bit like a story with a beginning, a middle and an end. And if you imagine the beginning is the foreground, the midground, and the background is the ending of the story as the eye is led through, through that scene. So that's the problem with waterfalls because a lot of the waterfall images you see, in fact, most of the waterfall images that you see start with the waterfall at the bottom of the image. It leads you nicely up the waterfall, but then there is no destination. You just get to the top of the waterfall and it kind of goes into nothingness. And a lot of the time it just feels like an anticlimax when you're looking at those images, or it certainly does to me. So I think it's really important to try and try and correct that with your composition. So one thing you can do with waterfalls is to get uh, downstream a bit and shoot up towards the waterfall. So the actual waterfall becomes the background and the focal point of the image and the river leads you up to that waterfall with a nice leading line. That does mean you might need to get your feet wet, but I really think it's worth it. You can also try something a bit more intimate, like I have today, get around the side of the waterfall, try and use that waterfall like a portrait of the landscape. Uh, so there's, there are lots of different things you can do, um, but I just don't always feel that passionate about waterfall photographs. I love seeing some of the ones that people create, just for me, it's not something I particularly love to shoot. When I do though, I like to use those images as little links, like we were talking about earlier on in a sort of bigger narrative of images. Right, I am now well into Golden Hour, up here on the North York Moors, which is one of my favorite places in the whole world to photograph. And right now I am composed using this beautiful lone tree here. And some of you might know that I've been working on a little project to try and tell the story of the British Moors during the winter. Now it is officially still winter right now, but it is feeling very spring-like today. Uh, but the heather here has not yet flowered and that's kind of what I want. It may not be a portfolio grade image, but I think this project, once it comes together and I'll link the images together in a project, they're gonna be, or I'm hoping, they're gonna be really good and tell a really nice story of these frankly stunning moors. They're so quiet, they're so peaceful on a beautiful afternoon like today or even when it's really bad weather. They're just fantastic. If you haven't visited, you really, really need to. Anyway, I've got the camera low down, so I'm looking along the surface of that heather. I'm at F8 because I don't mind if some of the heather is blurred in the foreground. It's just gonna lead me into that sharper area right on that tree. I've got the tree low down in the image slightly more towards the center and then I'm just hoping for an absolutely fantastic sunset which is possible because I've got some of the beautiful warm light at the moment hitting the tree. I'm in at about 60 millimeters from this distance. I'm going to bracket the images so I get some detail in the tree and I still get the detail in the sky behind as well. The perfect time to shoot this image is going to be just as the sun is hitting the horizon. So I get that nice warm light on the tree, but then I also get, hopefully, some orange and some yellow in these high altitude clouds behind me. I'm hoping that aeroplane contrail will have disappeared by the time it comes to shoot. Uh, but yeah, what a fantastic way to end this day. It's so still, it's so peaceful. So I'm just gonna enjoy it for a moment until sunset. So I think we're at just the right time now. The wind has got up a little bit. The sun is just about to set. Such a beautiful evening. I'm going to take one last image. I've actually got a fire over here. You might have seen that on the drone footage. It's blowing the smoke now right across behind the tree. That might improve things. It might not, but, but wow. I'm just loving it up here. <laughs> I'm just getting excited. Uh, yeah, straightforward shot, bracketed, F8, 1 30th of a second, two stops either side, ISO 100, and I'll edit it, I'll edit that together 
place wrong. So I'll show you the image in a minute. But please do go to firstmanphotography.com slash masterclass. I'll put a link down below for you as well to check that out. And I'll see you very, very soon. I'm Adam. This is First Man Photography. Out.